Hello everyone, my name is Christian Eschbach, and welcome to another one of my album reviews. Hey there everyone, welcome back. We are looking at Eric Clapton Unplugged. I bought this album when it first came out. Hold on, before we get going here. Apparently Lanny would like to say hi. This is Lanny everyone, I don't know if Lanny's been on camera much. Okay, Lanny, Lanny wants to say hi, so let me carry on now. Okay, Eric Clapton <laughs> Unplugged. Um, I got this house through, I got this CD through Columbia House or BMG. One of the two when I started one of my subscriptions with them. That's how I think most people got this. Most people also bought it for the exact same reason, Tears in Heaven, which broke out huge. And it is only one of four songs on this album that Clapton actually wrote. Uh, there are 14 tracks on here. You got Sign, Before You Accuse Me, Hey Hey, Tears in Heaven, Lonely Stranger, Nobody Knows When You're Down and Out, Layla, Running on Faith, Walking Blues, Alberta, San Francisco Bay Blues, Malted Milk, Old Love, and Rollin' and Tumblin'. Out of those, Sign, which is a nice instrumental opener, is Clapton. Tears in Heaven is Clapton, Lonely Stranger is Clapton, Layla is Clapton, and Old Love is Clapton. So you got five Clapton songs on there, okay? The rest are all covers. Every last other song is a cover. And the part that pisses me off the most about that is the fact that there is no cream on here whatsoever. And the reason why is because Eric Clapton is bitter with Jack Bruce over the fact that Jack Bruce gets all the writing credits. Ginger Baker is also bitter over that, but Clapton is the one that was still out performing and could have easily performed those songs and chose not to because he didn't want Michael Bruce getting, or not Michael Bruce, sorry, Jack Bruce getting any more uh, money than necessary. Um, that being said, after my, after listening to this album for the first time, seriously, in 20 years, I have not listened to this album in at least 20 years. I'm going to say that one, I'm disappointed. Uh, two, I remember why I haven't listened to it in 20 years. And three, Eric Clapton was the weakest link in Cream. Yep. A lot of people are going to be pissed off over that, but Jack Bruce gets all the writing credits. Ginger Baker is like a madman, brilliant on the drums. Like there are very few drummers that play like Ginger Baker, man. Ginger Baker is freaking the dude. All right. Mad, but the dude. Clapton, when you listen to this album, here's the problem, is the guitar work on most of this album, honestly, when you listen to it, is basically the same. There is, there is nothing special about this album. There is nothing original about this album. There is nothing that is unique about this album. There is nothing that pops out and makes you go, ooh, about this album. All the guitar stuff, for the most part, is very basic blues guitar. I mean, everything on here is a blues song, more or less. But the solos, the playing, everything like that, it's very generic. There's very little difference in vibe between it. Yes, some songs are slower, some songs are a little quicker, some are Southern blues, some are Memphis blues, some are Chicago-like blues, you know. So you got a variety of different blues in there, and you know your different blues and stuff like that, and, and your traditional songs and stuff like that. You can obviously tell them all apart. They don't all sound the same. But there is no range, really. Like, Clapton's solos, you know, if he's playing on a slide guitar, it sounds like a basic run-of-the-mill slide guitar solo when he's using a slide. When he's not playing with a slide, it sounds like a basic solo without a slide. You know, running through scales. And the thing is, is it's not like when the blues guys were playing and see a lot of the blues guys they had the tempo going you know they do the foot tap to keep their own tempo going and stuff like that but there was still emotion and passion and stuff like that like tears in heaven really for a song that Clapton stopped playing because it was too hard on him to keep playing it because, you know, all the emotions behind it. I mean, it's a beautiful song, but when, you know, you write a song to help you grieve with your son's death and then you constantly play it all the time, it gets to a point where, you know, you're prolonging your son's death almost, you know. 
Um, so when Clapton does, you know, on a song like Tears in Heaven, I'm going to be honest, at no point in that song to me, I know when you watch the video, you can see he, he gets right up. But there's no point in there where you feel it in the music. There's no point in there where you really hear it in his voice. And with a lot of the blues stuff, it's the same, you know? Like, when you listen to a lot of the old blues guys in that, you can hear the blues in them. And I've said this before, um, and I know people hate when I use terms like this because they sound racist, but Clapton sounds like a very generic white guy playing the blues. That's what it sounds like. It sounds like a, a, a white dude who has sat there with a metronome playing to the metronome left, right, and center, and there is a place for that. James Hetfield, my best friend, the amazing Drucifer. There are times where being pinpoint on like a metronome is very, very amazing and useful. But neither of those two guys I just said were are, are known as lead guitarists. Whereas, you know, you look at Hammett, his solos are wild, unabridged, you know? When the, these solos were originally played by the original blues guys, you could hear the passion in there. You could hear where they, you know, they were really kind of working that, making their pain come out in that guitar. You don't hear the pain in these guitars. It sounds polished, which is a major problem I have with the Unplugged series in general. I've already talked about the Mariah Carey Unplugged and what a joke it was with how much electric there was in it um this is this is an unplugged album okay so we can say that um as for the songs themselves i like sign as a good way to open it up just a nice kind of like honestly though it's kind of like a jerk around on the guitar kind of ditty you know uh which nothing wrong with that that is great to open up a show when you're doing an acoustic show stuff like that and to even do as bridges and interludes throughout i'm i'm cherry with that and this one works uh, before you accuse me, uh, Elias McDaniel originally. I actually have to use my computer for this one, folks. Uh, Elias McDaniel on is the original uh, writer for Before You Accuse Me. I do dig this, but I really... Clapton doesn't feel tortured on this. He, he doesn't feel... He sounds like a prim and proper polished white guy singing this song. And, and it really kind of annoys me a little bit. Um, Hey Hey by Big Billy Brunzi, it's all right. Tears in Heaven is a magnificent song. Um, realistically, anybody about this album just for Tears in Heaven, I understand. It is a magnificent song. Is it a $20 song? Not necessarily, but I got this as one of my nine CDs for a penny or 11 CDs or for a penny or whatever the hell it was I paid to join or for $1 or whatever. So it was a good value for me. <laughs> uh, Lonely Stranger, I enjoy this one. Uh, Nobody Knows When You're Down and Out by Jimmy Cox, I enjoy that one. Uh, Layla, this would be, what is it, Derek and the Dominoes, I believe? Uh, if I'm wrong, correct me in the comments. Love Layla, great song. Uh, Running on Faith, Jerry Lynn Williams, meh. Walking Blues, Sun House, uh, I, Walking Blues isn't bad either. Running on Faith, I kind of downplay it a little, but I really do kind of enjoy all the albums playing. Uh, Alberta, traditional, and also credited to Huddy William Ledbetter. Um, Alberta's not a bad tune. Uh, it's it's okay. I, I dig it. Um, I'm a big fan of the show Ghosts in uh, the North American. I haven't watched the UK version yet, so excuse me on that. North American version, I, I'm honestly wondering if that is where the name for the character Alberta on there came from, because this really feels like it would fit perfectly with that character. Um, San Francisco Bay Blues. That'd be Jesse Fuller. Um, I'm not a fan of San Francisco Bay Blues. Doesn't do much for me. Malted Milk Robert Johnson. Um, this one's not too bad. Not overly fond of it, but not too bad. Old Love. This is a Clapton Robert Cray track together. It's all right. And then you got Rollin' and Tumblin', which is a Muddy Waters track, and that is how it ends. Um, the whole way around, I'm not a fan of the album, and I don't know the next time I will ever listen to it again. It is definitely like a Sunday afternoon album, but most of my Sunday afternoon albums I find are a lot more enjoyable than this one. I realistically give me about another 20 years i'll come back to it again 20 years and i'll tell you how i think it about 20 years from now because you know i'll be older at that point i'll be slower i'll be more mellow 
wanted a little more chill, be a little more of my Sunday afternoon. And, and I mean, you hear a lot about how CDs start to degrade after 25 years. I've had this CD for uh, 25, easily, I've had this CD for easily somewhere between 25, 30 years, okay? It is not in pristine condition. It's got a few scratches on it, no big deal. Still plays fine in the CD player. Everything's on it, still good. So uh, some CDs definitely start falling apart. I've heard about that. But most of my CDs, the ones that are falling apart and they don't make it past the 25 years, I'm really wondering what type of conditions they're stored in. Because I'm not, I was as a teenager, I was not the most cautious with my CDs. And most of mine from that time period, this being one of them, like I ha I've reviewed multiple CDs that are from either my BMG or my Columbia House subscription. And I have not had a subscription for either of those companies since I was like 20. So, you know, literally it's been 25 years since I've had subscriptions of those companies. Anyways, folks, I'm done talking about this album and my life related to this album and whatnot. Let me know what you think about this album. Am I too harsh on this album? Am I not giving it a credit? Am I even giving it too much credit? I don't know. That's what the comment section is for. On your way down the comment section, you'll also see that there's some links. One goes to the TWA, as Trampoline Wrestling Association. One goes to the Howling Odyssey, which is where my music endeavors go. And one goes to uh, Patreon, which you can use to download my stuff. Putting a lot of work and effort into that again. Uh, so it's worth checking out. Um, right now, you got to get a subscription to be able to download or listen to stuff. Soon, I'm going to have songs individually available for download on there. Check that out. Anyways, folks, um, thank you very much for stopping by. Hit the like button, the subscribe button, the little bell for notifications. Peace, love, take care.